Chapter 1 You know you want one. Kelly had a sing-song voice. They are too cute for words, agreed Dylan, trying to judge his brother's reaction. If we didn't already have two, we might consider keeping the last one. No, firmly said Everett. He wasn't getting drawn into this. That one is for Bo. Kelly held up a bundle of squirming pug puppy. The tan one is for Bex and her baby. That leaves this little fellow wanting a home. No, repeated Everett. He wasn't getting stuck with a dog just because Kelly and Dylan had not managed to ensure Piddles or Puddles or whichever dog it was wasn't spayed when they got her from the shelter. I'm not a dog person. They are so sweet. Sterling reached into the basket and pulled out the darkest one, cuddling it. Jake and Everett shared a look. No doubt Jake was about to get a dog if his girlfriend had anything to do with it. Can we get back to the real reason we decided to meet? Everett grimaced as Dylan handed him a puppy. It was warm and had a bad habit of trying to lick him. He handed it off to Jake. Jake wants to talk about Dad and the company. Ramsley Insurance was in limbo after their father Robert's arrest for money laundering and as an accessory to drug smuggling. Their Uncle David had been smuggling large quantities of heroin into the country, then pouring the money through Ramsley Pharmaceuticals and Ramsley Insurance to hide his tracks. Now Robert was coming to trial, and David was nowhere to be found. I talked to Dad, confirmed Jake. He admits his part in the money laundering. He knew that David was obtaining the money illegally through drug running. Dad has decided to plead guilty. They digested this bit of news. What does that mean exactly? What is he facing if he pleads guilty? Quietly asked Everett. Part of him had still clung to the hope that their father had not known anything about their Uncle David's actions, that he had been unaware of the money laundering and could be found not guilty. I'm not certain, grimly responded Jake. The lawyer believes his sentence will be reduced with a guilty plea. He's hoping that Dad can get into a minimum security prison since Dad is of no threat to society. Mostly we just have to see what the judge says. Minimum security prison? echoed Everett in disbelief. Their dad wasn't exactly young, being in his late seventies. He might live the rest of his life there. In the meanwhile, dad has asked me to step up to become head of the company, sighed Jake. That means you'll have to come home permanently, Everett. We need you to take over the Western Division of Ramsley Insurance. It was past time to put an end to the European market attempt anyways. Is there even going to be a Ramsley insurance? dryly asked Everett. He had been working in Europe, trying to break into their insurance market with no success. All of the company's assets are frozen while the FBI continues to investigate. Stocks are tanking. If we can't meet our cash flow needs, we're going to be filing for bankruptcy. We will find the cash flow, firmly responded Jake. We're not going to let our customers down. I've already calculated how much I can put in from my own reserves to help the company. I'm sure that we can also look into loans from various sources to help us until the accounts are unfrozen. No doubt the company will have to pay a hefty fine, but we'll get through it. The FBI dropped in today, quietly announced Dylan as he wrapped an arm around Kelly. They're kind enough to give me notice that they're investigating me. They took my files, computer notes, basically everything. All my assets are frozen as they inspect them. I expect they'll be knocking on both your doors next. That means you might not be able to give from your own personal finances to the company, Jake. If we can't give from our own savings, what are our options? Everett asked in concern. Loans, loan extensions, and we could allow other companies to take over certain sections of our business for the interim, explained Jake. We all know Carver's Insurance would love to take over our health care division. They won't give it back if we manage to weather this, warned Dylan. I agree, Jake nodded wearily. However, we still need to see that our clients' needs get met. How are you going to be? Everett asked Dylan. 
Is there anything we can do for you? I doubt it. Dylan gave a rueful smile. We all know I wasn't involved in any of this. We'll just have to hope that the FBI investigation realizes that. What about money? asked Sterling. Do you need any? I've been broke before. Kelly gave a tight smile. I'm sure I can teach Dylan the best way to economize. Also, my home health business is doing okay. We'll just have to learn how to live off a much smaller income. It's only temporary, noted Dylan. We'll be okay. If you need anything, let us know, Jake told him. We need a new home for the last puppy, said a hopeful Kelly. Sterling shook her head. No, you don't. He's going home with Jake when he's ready. I suppose I did say I would help sighed Jake, eyeing the little dog Sterling was petting. "'That was unwise,' replied Everett. He frowned. "'Is there any way that we could get Dad's sentence reduced further?' "'What do you mean?' questioned Dylan. "'If David were to confess that he coerced Dad into the whole scheme, would it make a difference?' wondered Everett. "'I'm not sure,' shrugged Jake. He handed a sleeping puppy back to Kelly." That would be a question for the lawyers. However, I doubt that David is just going to confess. You know what our uncle is like. He does what is best for himself. Everett mulled the idea over. He didn't know what it would take to convince David to make a statement that would help their father. No doubt it would be something quite important. However, how couldn't they at least try? They discussed a few more details before deciding to call it a night. As they walked to the door, Jake took Sterling's hand. The couple had recently started dating after years of Sterling writing about the Ramsleys in the tabloids. To say that their courtship had a rocky start would be an understatement. Then again, it wasn't like Dylan and Kelly's start had been conventional either. Her friends had kidnapped him for a camping trip. The couple had eventually ended up in front of a judge for a marriage of convenience so that Kelly could keep custody of her son. Now they were happily working on becoming a blended family with three boys and soon another child on the way. Everett was the only bachelor of the three brothers left. Part of him envied their relationships. Part of him was happy not to have to modify his life for another person. While Everett was in the city, Dylan had offered to house him. As much as he loved his brothers, Everett was glad to have his own space. He had decided to sublet a condo on a monthly basis until they had things resolved with the charges of money laundering. Entering the condo, Everett unbuttoned his coat, tossing it on a chair. Alexa, turn on the lights. Set temperature to 72 and lock doors, he commanded. Immediately, the condo was flooded with light. Kicking off his shoes, Everett frowned as he looked out over the cityscape from the large glass windows. The thought of finding David, somehow getting him to confess that he was behind the entire illegal activity, and showing David had somehow coerced Robert into laundering the money through Ramsley Insurance, would not leave Everett. He had no idea what would entice David to turn himself in to the FBI. Then again, Maybe it was more about finding David and just getting him to record his confession. Surely that would be helpful in reducing any sentence the judge would determine for Robert. Everett wondered if David would have to be present in court, or if he could just make a video statement. He would have to ask the lawyer. Alexa, remind me to call Kramarn at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Once he had more information, he could decide what course of action to take. Feeling better about the idea of taking some sort of activity that would help his father, Everett headed for bed. Get back here! Bree yelled at the top of her lungs, legs pumping as she gained ground on the unruly canine. The Labradoodle was filthy. She wasn't even sure it was the right dog. Pushing a man out of her way, she made the turn into the alley after the four-legged beast. Aha! she crowed with delight. It was a dead end. A loading dock was the only destination here. There was no way the animal was going to get away from her. Pulling a dog harness out of her bag, she unsnapped it, crouching and ready. Come on, Bingo. Be a good boy. Let me catch you. Your mommy and daddy miss you. 
They're paying me big bucks to get you home. Her assistant, Marty, had laughed uproariously when he took the call. However, things were slow right now, and Bree had jumped on the chance of what she thought would be easy money. She had gone to all the animal hospitals, vets, shelters, and wherever else she could think of, looking for the mutt. She went knocking door to door in the neighborhood where the family lived, asking for any clues. Reward posters had been put up. Ads in the local paper, radio, and online had drawn attention and generated a lot of false leads. Finally, Bree took to walking around the area looking for the dog. She nabbed five of the loose Labradoodle lookalikes, none of them matching the microchip that the owners had installed. The shelter was starting to charge her for dropping off dogs. They charged extra for the last one since it had fleas. None of this was enough to make her quit. After a strong shower and throwing away her flea-ridden clothes, Bree had gotten dressed and come out again to look for the dog. Now she had one cornered. Sit! I said sit! As the dog made to dodge past her, Bree quickly jumped in the way, snagging the harness around its head. Wrestling with the beast, she managed to get one leg into the harness and snap it shut. It wasn't perfect, but as she snapped on a leash, Bree reflected that it would do for the moment. She needed a breather. This dog smelled badly. It was like it had been through the sewers. Wrinkling her nose, Bree pulled the microchip reader out of her bag. She had sprung for one after bringing the fifth dog to the shelter. Paying for someone to chemical bomb her car to get rid of fleas, plus the mounting fees from the shelter was taking a wad out of the reward money she was going to get when she caught Bingo. Bree had debated the ethics of scanning and releasing stray dogs. Her wallet had told her it was necessary. Turning on the reader, she scanned it over the Labradoodle. Bingo. Bree sighed in relief. Finally, she had the right dog. Sensing a momentary lapse as Bree relaxed, Bingo backpedaled in a rush, pulling out of the improperly fastened harness. Free, he ran to the back of the alley along the loading dock. Bingo, Bree growled, shoving the microchip reader in her bag. Come, come here now. The dog just stared at her, tongue lolling as it appeared to laugh at Bree. Narrowing her eyes, Bree stalked towards the dog. If you are a good boy, I will get you a burger before you get a wash at the pet store. Then you can go home with your pet parents, who were crazy enough to get a beast like you in the first place. Bingo barked. Bree lunged. The door to the loading dock opened, and Bingo disappeared in a flash into the building. No! Bree scrambled after the dog, passing a surprised employee. Hey, you can't go in there! The employee yelled after her. Bree ignored him, intent on the Labradoodle. Stop that dog! Racing through the shipping area, Bree chased Bingo until a man blocked her path. Excuse me, you can't be here. The dog! Bree pointed where Bingo had gone. I need that dog. This is a work zone. You're not wearing the proper equipment. We have forklifts here, the man explained. You could have gotten seriously hurt running around like that. You don't understand. You don't understand. Bree tried to peer over his shoulder. Sometimes it really was frustrating to be only 5'1". She sidestepped, only to be blocked by the beefy guy again. I have been hired to get that dog back to its owners. Please let me do my job. And I've been hired to keep the floor safe and production going. The man glowered down at her. You need to leave. I am happy to leave. Bree smiled up at him. As soon as I have the dog. This dog? Another man had Bingo in a bear hug, bringing the Labradoodle forward. I found him in the lunchroom. Fella gobbled down my bologna sandwich. You ought to treat your pet better. I have a mind to report you. Bingo isn't mine. He's been missing for a few weeks now. Bree tried to wrestle the dog into his harness. I'm going to get him a meal, a bath, and take him home to his owners. They have a boy with autism who is missing his dog. 
Well, then I'm glad we could help, the man said, holding Bingo while Bree snapped the harness shut, winding the lead around her hand. This time, the dog wasn't going to get away. Thank you, Bree sighed in relief. I really appreciate it. She gave them a wave goodbye, leading Bingo out of the building. The dog happily panted before going stock still. What is it now? she lamented, looking at Bingo. What are you doing? Bree followed the gaze of the canine to see a cat arching its back and hissing. No, Bree moaned before her arm was nearly yanked out of its socket as Bingo darted after the now running cat, barking excitedly. It was all Bree could do to keep herself upright as the leash tightened painfully around her wrist. Stop, Bingo! The dog had a hearing problem. Or maybe just a problem with obeying orders, Bree thought as she tried to put on the brakes unsuccessfully. It was four feet of eighty pounds against her one hundred and thirty. She worked out. She was a runner. She was no match for that much dog. The cat ran up a drain pipe, heading for a ledge of the building. Bingo barked furiously at the bottom of the pipe. Bree leaned against the wall to catch her breath and carefully untangle herself from the leash. Okay, Bingo, the car is parked just down the street. Let's go to the car. We'll hit the pet store for a bath, then I can get cleaned up. Burgers before I bring you home. Bingo ignored her, barking at the cat who was now grooming itself on the ledge. Let's go, Bingo. Bree said tiredly, pulling on the leash. The dog didn't move. Summoning her strength, Bree put her weight into it, tugging and towing the resisting labradoodle down the sidewalk. Quad straining, she huffed, yanking on the leash. One thing was for certain. Bree would not need to hit the gym today. Struggling, she made it to the car and unlocked it. Get in. The dog had stopped barking, but was now laying on the sidewalk. Bree had been dragging it the last ten feet. She pointed to the open door. I said, get in, Bingo. Bingo gave her a baleful look. I have decided I'm a cat person, announced Bree. She tied the leash to the handle of the door. Grimacing, Bree pulled on the harness. Get up and get in the car. Bingo remained a dead weight. Bree wrapped her arms around the animal, pulling it up onto the back seat. She pushed him under his bum, sliding Bingo across the seat before shutting the door. Panting, Bree tossed her bag into the passenger seat before peeling a ticket out from under her windshield wiper. She was fifteen minutes over the meter. Lousy dog! Bree searched her phone. Nearby pet stores that bathe dogs. The phone chirped the results and Bree selected the nearest. Once she pulled out into traffic, Bingo started to howl his displeasure. Maybe I'm a fish person, Bree muttered as she hunkered over the wheel. Three turns later and feeling a little deaf, she squeezed into a parking spot, just gently touching the bumper of the vehicle behind her. She fed the meter, checked the bumpers, which both looked unharmed, then prepared herself mentally for dragging the dog into the pet store. I will win, she repeated her mantra. I'm a big bad bounty hunter. I always get my man, or in this case, dog. I always collect my reward. I will win. Taking a deep breath and immediately regretting it since Bingo's sewer smell had rubbed off on her, Bree opened the car door, untied the leash, and dragged a resisting Bingo into the pet store. The dog laid limp on the tile, allowing Bree to pull it along. Hey, anyone want to earn some cash to bathe a dog? An employee approached her. Can I help you? Absolutely. Bree put the leash in the woman's hand. Bingo here needs a bath. I need him to look presentable for his owners. The woman's nose wrinkled. She looked down at the filthy dog. He's disgusting. I expect you'll want to charge extra. Bree said gleefully. She didn't care. There was reward money coming her way. 
Whatever he needs, just get him all spiffy so I can return him home. It will be a couple of hours at least. She pursed her lips in silent disapproval. Perfect. Bree smiled. Then I can get the car and myself clean. Say four o'clock? Four it is. I have some paperwork you'll need to fill out. The employee snapped her fingers. Come, Bingo. Bingo lumbered to his feet, following the woman to the back of the store. Traitor? Bree hissed in astonishment. Picking her jaw back up off the floor, Bree followed to fill out the paperwork. Two hours later, Bree had cleaned the car, which now smelled like a pine forest sewer, but bore no muddy traces on the back seat. She had a shower with a change of clothes and was ready to tackle Bingo once more. This time she had come fully prepared. Smiling, she went straight to the grooming area. I'm here for Bingo? Sure, the employee nodded. They discussed the final bill, and Bree tried not to let sticker shock show. That is a little pricey, Bree commented with a tight smile. Bingo was filthy, the employee returned politely. He also needed grooming to get rid of burrs that were stuck in his fur. I see. Bree crossed her fingers and held her breath as she swiped her credit card. It blinked as it was approved. She let out a relieved breath and relaxed. As long as the smell's gone. It's gone, the woman assured her. She went to the back and returned a few moments later with a shaved bingo. It hardly looked like the same dog. Just to be sure, Bree scanned it with the microchip reader to confirm that it was indeed bingo. Excuse me, the employee was offended. I assure you, this is your dog. No, lady, this isn't my dog, Bree told her. However, I'm returning him home today and will happily never see him again. Yanking on Bingo's lead, Bree started to drag the reluctant dog along the tiled floor. Bingo dug in his heels. Bree decided to go to Plan B. Fishing a burger out of her purse, Bree held it up as high as she could. Come on, Bingo! I've got a nice juicy burger. It has all the trimmings. Bingo's nose twitched. He smacked his lips and lurched to his feet. Bree quickly picked up her pace as the dog chased her. This may have been a bad idea. Running through the pet store, Bree hit the fob of her keys to unlock the car. She broke the burger in half, wrapper and all tossing one half to the ground for the dog to eat while she opened the door to the back seat. Bree watched in amazement as Bingo downed it in one gulp. She threw the other half of the burger into the back seat. Bingo jumped in, searching for the food. Bree slammed the door shut and did a happy dance. Yes! Rubbing her hands together in delight, she pulled another ticket off the windshield of the car before getting in. Tossing it into the glove compartment with the others, Bree punched the address of Bingo's owners into the GPS. Easy money, she reminded herself as Bingo started howling as she drove. Bree put in earplugs, trying to drown out the noise. She turned up the tunes, singing along as she traversed the city streets. Soon enough, she was pulling up in an affluent neighborhood of townhouses. Parking on the street, Bree shut off the vehicle and pulled out the earplugs. Guess what, Bingo? You're home! Bree grinned, turning to look at the dog, expecting it to be grateful for its imminent release from her care. Her smile slipped as she surveyed the total destruction of the back seat of her car. Foam and ripped pieces of upholstery were everywhere as Bingo lay panting on the springs of what remained. Swallowing hard, Bree got out of the car. I will win. I will collect my reward. I don't give up. I win. It looked even worse as she opened the back door to the car, grabbing Bingo's leash as he jumped out. The back of the passenger seat had been ripped to shreds as well. This was going to take a lot of money to fix. Yanking on the leash, Bree pulled Bingo to the front door and rang the doorbell. Bingo sat, panting. Bingo's pet mom opened the door. Bingo! 
Bree dredged up a smile as the woman fawned over the dog, hugging him. Returned safe and sound as promised. He has his hair cut, she gushed. I would never have thought to do that. How clever! The employee from the pet store had been right. The dog didn't smell like sewer anymore. Pine, air freshener, and a burger, but not sewer. He had a bath. Could we come in? Of course. Pet Mom pulled Bingo in, who gave Bree a pathetic look as he allowed himself to be dragged into the house. Charles, look who's home! Bree didn't feel any sympathy for Bingo. She came inside, shutting the door and any avenue of escape off. She was intent on getting her promised pay. Bree kept her tacked-on smile as Pet Dad approached. Bingo! How wonderful! Pet Dad grinned, ruffling up the Labradoodle, who bore it with silent recriminations to Bree. Yes, it's wonderful, agreed Bree. She looked at her watch. I hate to break up this reunion, but I have another case I need to tend to. Would you mind? Oh, yes, Pet Dad straightened up. I will write you a check. That would be good. Bree smiled for real now. Let her assistant Marty laugh now. Once she had the check in hand and could pay some bills, he would have to stop giving her nicknames like the dog catcher, canine caper solver, and her personal unfavorite, the dog lady. Moments later, she had the check in hand. Feeling generous, Bree grabbed Chinese food at the angry walk before heading back to her rented office. She admired the new sign a moment. Henson Investigations it was beautiful, in her opinion, just another firm step in the right direction. Aubrey had loved the moment when she decided to go into business for herself, enough chasing low-life criminals for bond money and not getting paid nearly enough to risk life and limb. Now she was through working for the local bonds salesman. She was branching out. Bree had passed her private investigator exams. She was a licensed bounty hunter. Having her own business was a dream come true. If only it were not so expensive. Bree opened the door, struggling up the stairs to the second floor office, letting herself in. Whoa, Chinese! Marty pulled off his headset. Did you catch the critter, or are you just commiserating because he's still missing? Is there ice cream? Bree tilted her head, raising an eyebrow. Marty looked over the bags. Nope. That means you caught him. Bingo is safely home with his family. Bree pulled out the check with a flourish, laying it on the desk. We can now pay the rent, utilities, damage to my car, parking tickets, and your salary for another month. Marty picked up the check. What a ridiculous amount to pay to return a dog. Hey, they love him. Bree pulled out the food from the bag. Any luck on finding another case to pay your exorbitant assistant fees? Nope. Marty grabbed a fortune cookie, snapping it open. Things are way too slow lately. It's like people are trying to be good or something. Here's a fun cookie. Your fortune will be reversed. Maybe we will get a big case. One can hope. Bree cracked open her own fortune, reading the slip of paper. A golden opportunity will come this month. Okay, sure thing. Hey, don't knock the fortune cookie, Marty told her. That's right, a deep voice said behind her. You never know if a fortune cookie might come true. If you enjoyed this chapter of In Pursuit of a Billionaire, book eight of the Ramsley Brothers series, look for the next chapter. Please consider sharing this video with a friend who you think might enjoy it. This helps me with the YouTube algorithms and is free and easy for you to do. Happy listening!